Good afternoon, uh, students and audience, Ms. Amina. So uh, today, inshallah, our topic will be about academic research foundations for early childhood education. We will focus on the strategies for writing literature reviews because I think it is important and most of our students, you know, you are doing now, for example, in your task, you're doing like some of you are doing actual research, others doing like any type of research. So the literature review is the uh, like, you know, the start of your own research. So our goals for today workshop, uh, I want you just to understand what are the purpose, the basics, the requirements of, you know, writing effective literature review. You try to, you know, uh, criticize the research materials, the articles, and also what are the strategies to, for example, you know, organize and you draft your literature review and then, you know, how to cite because it's important, you know, to write the reference, the in-text reference, and also at the end. So we'll start first. What is the purpose of a literature review? Why we are writing a literature review? So when you write a literature review, it is what? It is the previous studies about a topic that you are, you know, trying to, uh, to search for. So what you do, you critically look at the existing knowledge, the existing research, the current research, the previous studies and the current studies. What you do, you start to uh, think about the background information about the topic, what is the importance of that topic, what are like, you know, the familiarities, what are you familiar you know about that topic and also you think about what can you do for future research how you do that you check the gap in research or the problem in the research what are the characteristics of the literature view how you do it so firstly you try to find the important research trends, what are the research trends in a topic, and then you assess what are the strengths, the weaknesses of the current research, and then you try to find the gap in the knowledge, what is missing in the information, and then you will establish what is the need for the current or the future research project. Because for example, Usually you don't research a topic that, you know, many people like, you know, research it. What do you mean by this? Like, for example, uh, for the same context, for example, if you research a topic about UAE university students, OK, so same context, same place, OK, and it is the topic, let's say, about the online learning. The methodology, like, you know, you collect data, like, for example, the interviews, uh, surveys, document analysis. So maybe you will find similar studies, but maybe it's different because maybe uh, those studies done maybe let's say in higher college of technology or maybe Zaid University. So that's the difference because you know the environment is different. Yeah. So what are the steps? When you start writing your literature review, you have to plan. It is important. You plan for it. Then you start reading and researching. You read articles, then you do analysis, then you do drafting and revising. It is important to do drafts because you know you have to write your draft and you go back to revise it because in, in the process of revise, you will check the language, you will check maybe if you are missing you know, a citation or reference. So it is very important to do that. So the first step we said planning. So when you do planning, you have to think what type of literature review you want to write. You will think about your focus. So you will think about 
what is your thesis? What is the problem that you want to discuss? What are the research questions that you will, you know, try to research in your whole literature review? So you have to think about all these issues before you start your reading. And then you try to identify your focus. You try to sort or categorize your information. And then you eliminate and you remove the irrelevant information. So it's like, you know, for example, you can do mind mapping, okay? And you have different information. So you will check maybe Let's say you have the topic of, you know, the advantages of online learning and disadvantages. So you will sort them. You have one category and second category. And then any information that you don't need, you will remove and delete those information. In the planning, you will think about the type of the literature review that you will do. Is it your study about theory? Will you do only like, you know, theoretical kind of research? Or you will think about the methodology. For example, you have a research, but in your research, you focus on only, let's say, qualitative interviews and all that. You will not focus on quantitative studies. Uh, is your uh, literature review about policies, for example, what are the policies in the UAE University regarding the online learning? Let's say you will check through the history. For example, before coronavirus, our system mostly were like, you know, face-to-face. Uh, -face. After coronavirus, we started, you know, implementing the online and blending. And in the future, what we will do as a university? So that, you know, you think about what are the policies related to the Ministry of Education policies. As an example. When you plan for your research study, you have to think about the scope of your literature review. What sources you think you will use? What are the reference? Uh, do you want to use articles? Do you want to use books, uh, websites? Uh, what kind of data will you use? For example, if you are doing a, a research study only about the Emirates of Abu Dhabi, so that means you will think if it's related to the Ministry of Education or EDIC, so you will think about, you know, Dhafra as like, you know, a city, you will think about Al Ain, you will think about Abu Dhabi. So you have to, so you will search any resources related or references or article related to those areas. You will not maybe include resources related to Dubai or maybe Fujairah or other areas. So you have to think how you, like, you know, you plan your study. You will think about the academic discipline, for example, the same idea, let's say the virtual learning or the online learning, those kind of studies, like, you know, we've conducted in different fields. For example, you are in education. Sometimes it can be different than, okay, if you are doing it for the medicine or maybe for business students. So you will think about the discipline. The other step is reading and researching. You will start the reading process. What kind of materials do you want to read? articles in newspapers you will do let's say kind of you know collecting data and all these kind of issues so in this process you will try to collect some materials for example you can go to the library or now it is online google scholar okay or any kind of data library data database you'll try to collect and read, for example, the article, the books, newspapers, whatever resource you want. Then you will summarize, you will write a summary. When you write a summary, this is a process we call it bibliography. So what you do, you will think, for example, you have one article, so you will think about who is the author. Uh, what is the purpose of the author writing this article, for example? 
uh, what the theoretical perspective is using. Because, you know, um, the theory that author is using is important because if he is using maybe different theoretical perspective, so the idea of the whole research will be different. So we have to think about what kind of theory he's using. Uh, what kind of research methodology? Uh, like, you know, is he using mixed methods, like between quantitative, qualitative, survey, interviews? Who were the audience? For example, if he writing uh, this research for faculty members, for researchers, for students, for so who are, or maybe for policy makers, so who are the intended audience? You will think about, okay, when you start reading the article, what is the principal point? What is the conclusion, the thesis? What are the questions in that research? You will think about, okay, that author, his position, his ideas, what are the support for his ideas? You will think, for example, OK, how you read this study or your topic to other studies or the same problem or the topic. What are the differences between those studies and your idea? And most importantly, you will think about, OK, like your study or this study, the article, how will add to your project? So the article is important for your project. Will you benefit if you write some parts and so you cite this article? And what you have to do is when you read and research, just select the books and article that is like, you know, only relevant to your study, that related to your study, that is important to your study. Don't just, you know, like, you know, find any articles and you write from them without, you know, reading the article, skimming and scanning the article and thinking that, okay, will that article benefit you in your study or not? The other step we call it analyzing is the analysis. So what does it mean? For example, we have the previous studies, the existing research. So how do we assess them and evaluate them? So what we do, for example, let's say we have list of studies. So we will think about, okay, what are the arguments in those studies? Because we have to compare to our arguments. Is it similar? Is it different? Is that what we want or not? So how you analyze? First, you start with analyzing the article. If you have individual source, one article, you analyze this article. And then you think about, you know, this article related to your whole, like, you know, study related to your all other articles that you are reviewing. So you start with one article and then, okay, when you connect this article to the other articles, the body of research, how you connect it to your topic. Does all this, this article and the other articles fit with your research? So when you start the analysis task for your literature review, what you do? Usually you summarize first and then you synthesize. That means you have different ideas. You put the ideas together and then you critique, you criticize them and then you compare and contrast. What are the differences? What are the similarities and all that? So those like in general, the uh, task of the literature review and how you do the literature review. So again, I will mention because uh, this point is important. When you do the analysis task for your literature review, you will think, OK, how you will do your literature review? Do you want to do like summary? You will do then the synthesize and then the critique and then the compare, the comparison.
So for the step of the summary and synthesis, what you will do in your own word, okay? You will summarize what you, did you find in the study. Usually in this part, it's important to see like, you know, when you read an article, you will go to the end of the, uh, the study. You'll go to the result, for example, and also the conclusion, because it's what the importance of that study. So when you think about the summary, how can you write it? You start thinking about, okay, what do you know about the topic? And then what are the arguments? What are the characteristics, the figures, or the concepts in that topic? What are the theories, the debates are existing for this topic? What are the common methodologies they are using? So in any article, for example, as academic research, you will think about, okay, in that article, okay, you will think about, okay, what is the area of that topic? What are the arguments for the author, the concept? Because there are some, you know, uh, like, for example, uh, definitions, some figures, diagrams. OK, what are the theories they are using, the debates, for example, like, you know, uh, are they uh, with a topic or against that topic, for example? What kind of methodology do they use, like, you know, document analysis, thematic analysis? Do you use like, you know, surveys, interviews, documents? So you have to think about what kind of data and methodology they are using in their study. So here, like, you know, uh, if you are writing a summary or synthesis, you can use those wording. For example, the author has demonstrated, the authors was concerned, the author compared the authors deals with so when we read those words we know that you know you are what summarizing or synthesizing the article here for example you can see uh, a sample of the summary of synthesis for example you know the first one is to revise those authors applied the second way is those authors adopted, so those, you know, a sample of a summary and synthesis. How the, when we mean synthesis is you connect the ideas together, okay? So when you read it, it's flow, the ideas flow. Here also another example, and it's related also to uh, early childhood education. For example, BRG, you know, we mentioned, for example, stateage of uh, cognitive uh, development and for example for Ericsson the psychological development so you can check that you know they say that and then BIJ describe for example characteristics behaviors and so that's what a summary and you can see there is in-text citation we mentioned from where we got those information it's very important so you are not accused of plagiarism. Other step, we call it comparison and critique. So what you do, you compare and you criticize. So you evaluate the strength and weaknesses of the work. You think about the article and you think about what are strengths and the weaknesses of those uh, studies. So you will think, okay, what are the differences? What is new? What is controversial? Like, you know, like it's, it's against an idea or different. Okay. Uh, the views or opinions or perceptions of those researchers, do we need to test them again? Do they have evidence of what they are saying? Did they do lots of data collection analysis that demonstrate their point of view? Or they are lacking actually, or it is contradicting, or it's too limited what they are saying, or their idea is very general, or maybe they forgot a point related to this? 
So also if we think what are the research design or the method they are using, are they satisfactory or the way they are using the method or design is not accurate way? So we have to think about all these kinds of issues. For example, I remember um, a research proposal and study were conducted in one of the Emirates here in the UAE. And the researcher who got the finance for that, the grant, was a researcher from a foreign country. So when she did the research and when she did the study, you know, the, the result she got, if for example, because, you know, for example, we are Emirati, for example, or anyone living in the UAE will know the answer, will know that the, the results immediately without doing the research. Because there are some, like, you know, ideas are general. So I think that's, you know, it's wasting time to do that research and wasting also money because it's a grant. OK, so that's what I mean. Usually when you do a research or when you read about article, you have to think about who is the author and what he's implying. Because also an example, once I went to a conference in one of the countries, international countries, and we were discussing about what the virtual learning uh, during Corona virus, the COVID. So, for example, we mentioned that, you know, uh, in some areas, for example, in one of the Emirates, without mentioning the Emirates, they are, you know, conservative. So, for example, they don't open the camera, okay, while, for example, teaching. So, one of the audience, he's not from our culture. He stand up and he said, yeah, you know, uh, because, you know, they are, they, they are not, you know, the women there, they are uh, not empowered, uh, they don't have freedom and all that. So when you hear that voice and what he's saying is totally uh, inaccurate because we are, as Emirati, as local here in the UAE, especially women, we are, you know, having the freedom, the power. We are respecting our culture if we, we have the choice, you know, that's part of respect. If we, you know, we have the choice if we want to open the camera, if we don't want, if we want to speak up, okay, especially if it's recorded, if we don't want, we can use the chat. So we have different, you know, opportunities. And if this is part of culture. It's not about, you know, uh, you know, taking out, taking, you know, our freedom. So that's what I mean. It is important, especially if you read an article, you have to know the background of that uh, author. So when you do the comparison and critique, it will be obvious for you to understand what's going on. So here, uh, just a sample of the comparison and critique. Usually what you do, for example, uh, in this ambitious but flawed study. What do you mean by flawed study? That means there is an issue with this study. Or maybe you can see, like, you know, this study are similar to what is reported. So that means two authors wrote about the same, like, you know, topic and they got the same, for example, or similar results. Here is uh, another example. For example, you can say author often registers disappointments or surprise. So that means his results is, you know, he didn't expect that uh, result. Or maybe at words, the product of, for example, have a code. So in contracts. So you see like, you know, the, the word you are using here is like, you know, you, you compare and you contrast. Here, another example, like, for example, a model has also received its share of criticism and cited shortcomings. So, from those words, we can see what is the critique. Here, 
we can use some uh, adjectives to evaluate. For example, the words like complex, usual, impressive, innovative, uh, limited, restricted, flawed. So those words, it is for evaluation and critique. We can use them in our research. Another step is the analyzing. We have to analyze to put all our work and research together. So think about it. You started summary and then synthesis and then you compare and then you criticize the article or the studies that you read. So through this, what you have to do? Maybe you will think about the topic in chronological development. That's mean in history. Let's say you have a topic related to the UAE and education in the UAE. Okay. Let's say if you starting from before 1971, before the union of the UAE. If you discuss anything related to the education, it can be totally different than, let's say, this year, 2022. So that's what we call it chronological development through the history. Or maybe you can use different approaches to the problem. You have a problem you want to discuss, but when you think about the problem, okay, you, you might think about it in related to the finance, or maybe related to the cultural issues, or maybe related to a language, or maybe related to the environment. So, as interdisciplinary fields. You might think about the topic, is it a debate? Is it trending, ongoing debate about the same issue? Okay, we will think about, okay, what is the seminal study or studies the most important and we think about okay where is the paradigm shift for example we are studying about education in the uae and in one of those years something happens and it's shifting for example the covid 19 you know is what happens with that context it's shifting what the paradigm of the uh, the type of learning. Now we are shifting more to online and blended. Before that, mostly the online education was accredited by the Ministry of Education, for example, in Hamdan University in Dubai. But the other universities, you know, they have some kind of restrictions. So for example, let's say you are a student, and you are, you know, studying in the US, in the UK, in, uh, let's say, Germany, or, you know, any other countries, international. So, for example, based on the accreditation system of the Ministry of Education, okay, for your certificate, maybe you are allowed just to take two online courses, and that previous. Now, with the new system, everything is changes okay so that's what we call it paradigm shift something happens shifted all the ideas the beliefs the system we had before and policies you will think about okay what are the researchers know about this topic so you go to previous studies and you check what do they know about it you will check what they what they don't know because that what you want to 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 research more about what do they don't know what do you want to do for future studies you will think okay if you done this studies will this study contribute to the existing knowledge is it important is it beneficial for us or not Because, for example, uh, let's say in our country, 
we have our religion and it is Islam, okay? And maybe you are studying, think, studying, like, you know, a study, your study is related, for example, to another religion. And maybe you will think about idea is not accepted, maybe to our religion or maybe to, to our culture. So why you want to, to do the research and waste your time? Even maybe this same study can be conducted in another research, in another context, and another culture, and also another religion or country. So you have to think about all these issues before you start analyzing. The other step is the drafting. It's very important to do drafts because you have to start writing and then you know you have draft one, two, three, four, and you improve your literature review. Because when you do the first draft, for example, it will assess you to know how you manage your draft. You will think about, okay, what are the headings that you will discuss? You will think, for example, about your topic. What is the thesis statement, the main topic? How you will organize your literature review, your introduction? You write, you start writing your conclusion. You start thinking about the citation, the references that you will use. So you will think about your thesis statement. It is your argument, your topic. And it is combination of what I will mention now. So you will have an argument, a claim or topic. You will try to think, okay, what are the previous studies saying about your claim or your topic? What are the conversation about it? And then you will think, okay, where is the gap? What is the weaknesses in that study? What other researchers didn't know about that topic? And then you relate your literature to the whole study, to the aim of your study. Let's say previously maybe we didn't have uh, lots of research related to the online learning in the UAE, for example, because we didn't have it as a system, maybe in the UAE University. So now with coronavirus, we can see lots of new studies related to it. So here you see uh, examples of these statements, for example, teachers need some knowledge of stage theories of children development. So this related to the early childhood education. And you can see the other topic, interdisciplinary studies of the meaning of home. So this is the thesis statement. From reading this, we can know what will be your topic, your study about. Here also other examples. For example, in this article, we review and critique scholarship on place-based education. So that's mean your study will be about what? literature review and critiquing. So it is a review study.
the other process is organization. You have to organize your study. What kind of approach you will use to organize the body of your paper when you start writing your article or your research or literature review? If it will be, you know, the headings that you will use, the topics that you use, how you will organize them. Will you use a topical paste or distance to close or a debate or chronological based on the history or seminal study? The most important topic. So I'll explain each one. So what do you mean by topical? That's mean we will think about a topic and in that topic we'll think about what are the sub fields about the topic or the subject area or the approaches related to the topic. We will try to think about subsections, subheadings. We might, you know, critique each one individually. So a topic and different paragraphs in each topic. And then we'll think about, you know, the large body of the literature. We will think about what the studies to include and what a study to not include. We might think about it as chronological development. For example, we have a topic and we think about the topic through the history. So we'll discuss that topic based on the history. So here you can see some examples. Like, you know, three important areas of this field. Or another example, the, for example, the topic has also been an important area of study in this field. So this, like, you know, it's about the topics. The idea of uh, distance to close is, you know, when you try to organize your topic, you make them as a groups. You think, what are the relevance to the current research? So you describe the studies and you think about the similarities and what are relevant to the topic. Sometimes you think about, okay, what are the methods, the models, for those studies. So here an example, you can say this model similar to. Another type is as a debate. When you write your literature, you write it as a debate. So for example, you have a topic and you think about it in chronological components through the history about this topic. You think about different strands of this idea and you criticize each one. If you have, for example, different models. For example, let's say you have different positions someone against the idea, someone with the idea. So you will think about it in this way. Here example of uh, a debate, how you write. For example, you can say uh, two, three, four distinct approaches. This is a problem. The first model, the second model, and like this. Uh, the type of the chronological, it means, you know, through the history. So you discuss a topic in a field and the development of that idea over a period of time. You can do it as linear progression, like from one year to another year, 
okay or maybe you can do it as paradigm shift just maybe one point the shift in that point or linear as you know through the history let's say from the union of the uae till this year what happens to the education system for paradigm as i said maybe you just discuss the shift in COVID-19 issue related and effect to the education system in the UAE. So here an example of the language that we can use. You can say failed study, second study modified or contradicted to the other study, this study represents the current state of the field. Other approach or type is the seminal study, the importance. So how you do it? You describe the important study. And then you organize the studies. In this type, you have to mention clearly what is the importance and the central in this study for future study. Why it is important. Here an example you can say as a language, the most important research or maybe the research fell into two camps and then you explain. So you focus on the significance of that study. Now we will go to the introduction. How you start writing your introduction? You think about the scope of your literature review the background for example if you're discussing about the education the UE so you have to think about let's say the Ministry of Education you might think historically about ADEC you might think all these kind of changes in the policies you think about what are the stakeholders mentions for example in the news if you don't have enough literature about your topic for example especially if it is a new topic and we don't have much research about it. You'll think, okay, about why this research is important. Why do we need this research? For example, let's say during the coronavirus, you are studying a research about students in KG and you notice as a research that, you know, we have many absentees during that period, especially with the online sessions. So might study about this issue. So because it is important, you want to know what is going on with that. And then you make your claim, your topic. And then you think about, OK, what is the overview? About your discussion to guide you through your study. Here an example of introduction you can see when you write your introduction you can you know have some references and literature from other studies because you know other researchers might you know wrote about your topic. For example you can see here uh, there is currently much you know controversy over how non-human primates understand the behavior of the other animate beings. And then you can see on the other hand. So, you know, you keep going with the discussion. Okay, if you write your conclusion, what you do? You do summary the findings of your review. You provide a closure. And then you explain so what of that closure. 
you might write implication for future studies or connection to the current studies because you know this is important because some of the uh, researchers they don't write implications for example you write your research you conduct your research you have reasons okay tell us what is your research what do you recommend based on your data based on your results so we, we won't know because you know any other researchers when they come to your research usually they go sometimes firstly and importantly to the implication for the future studies because from that part they can think about their own new study and that's how you know the other researchers continue researching and doing the research or you might connect it to again to your current study that you are doing so here an example like for example you say in summary this is what happened you might say as a consequences that's what happened and also maybe this study is the first to you know directly compare children and so this is all about early childhood education so the samples this is very important especially for the students you have to cite whatever information you take even if you paraphrase information that you write it by your own words you have to cite it even for example let's say you study about piaget in your classes in university even if you study even if you memorize that information you have to go to the literature and you have to cite it it is important so you don't say like no i, I know it from my study I memorize this idea. No, you have to cite it. You have to go back and cite it. It means you document it because if you don't do this, this is called, you know, plagiarism, and it is an issue for you, especially if you are a researcher. So what you do, uh, you might paraphrase. For example. You might cite it if you didn't paraphrase, you use the quotation for that. The citation, we have two types. We have the in-text, that's mean inside the text while you're writing your ideas or paraphrasing, you have to cite it. And also at the end, you have to have accurate record of all the articles or the books or newspapers or articles so when you do citation please don't do plagiarism sometimes the quotation irrelevance sometimes you cited but the site is not related to to the same paper especially that's happened because um, for example you read articles and then in that article you want you know some ideas and those ideas are written by other researchers and the problem is that researcher didn't cite accurately that you know idea so that's where we we had the issues okay you go and you search for the citation or maybe he didn't cite it so you have to go for the same author the same ideas the same articles and all that so you have to be careful with this and also it is important how you cite how you write your citation for example like now in education we are using uh, aba style okay the list the latest version even the the versions are different so you just you, you go and Google it's like you know how to write the citations because if you cite an article is different if you are citing a website. Uh, others, for example, business they are using MLA. So you have to follow what you are asked when you do your research. Here example of citation. For example, if you're quoting, you have to use the quotation mark and you cite it. 
when you do paraphrasing, you cite it, but you, you don't need to write, you know, to add the quotation mark. Other steps which is very important is revising. After you write and fine tune your draft, please revise it. It is very important because you have to check the language. You have to check, for example, if you miss any kind of reference and text citation, uh, maybe some spelling, maybe, you know, all these kind of issues, you can see it by revising. And also, it is recommended to maybe give your draft to another person to check it for you. If a person who's doing proofreading, checking the language, give it to him or her to revise it for you. It is important because, you know, when you as a researcher, you do the research, you know, you, you sit, you read and write for long hours, for days, sometimes for years, you know, you memorize everything. Sometimes you cannot see what is wrong with your study, even spelling and all that. So with another eye, someone else can see it because he's reading for the first time, especially for experts. So don't give your paper to anyone, give it to someone who's expert, who knows what he's doing. For example, say, you want to check the language, so that means give it to someone who's in linguistics. If you want to check, let's say, um, about the ideas, if your literature review related to the early childhood education field, so give it to someone, to a faculty member or expert in that field, because they can check the themes, the ideas, and they might know those information. Are they correct or not? Especially now, the issue of, you know, publishing the papers, the articles, sometimes some articles are not good. Even the information, the way it's written are not good. That's the reason we have to check before we take any information. And uh, that, for that reason, usually we don't recommend the students to take any information from, let's say, Wikipedia or, you know, any website. It should be, you know, accredited website. And it's not written by unknown author. So when you do revising, think about your title of your paper. It should be related to your content. Think about your introduction how you can introduce your review. Think about your thesis, your claim. What are you claiming? Is it clear or not? Think about your body of your literature review, how you organize it. Is it clear or not? If you are doing subheadings, should be clear. OK, what about the your sentences, the topics? When you start your paragraphs, yeah, the topic sentence, is it clear? Does it give us the main, the major ideas for each paragraph? Because what we do when we start reading a paragraph, we start reading the first sentence and the last sentence, because the first tell us you will talk about what, and the conclusion will tell us what is your, you know, conclusion of that paragraph. Think about your transition. How is your writing flow? For example, let's say you are talking about topics. So I start reading the first paragraph, then the second paragraph, and then the third paragraph. So I have, as a reader, to read it smoothly. So you are not jumping from one idea to another idea. And that's what we, you know, sometimes find difficult in reading some of the students' literature review. They are jumping from one idea to another idea sometimes from a context, a country, to another country. So that's all like, you know, mixing up that we don't recommend during writing your literature review. The conclusion, the closure, is it effective? Because, for example, you are doing a whole research for months, for example, and then your conclusion, 
it's not supporting what you are, you know, mentioning through the whole paper. It's not a good for you. So you have to think about it. What will be the conclusion? What is the closure? Usually, as we said, it can be supporting your study or it can be a recommendation for future study. And most importantly, and it is easy to do, spelling and grammar. Even if you are using sometimes your uh, word, it can highlight and it can underline or highlight it in red. Okay, it depends on your, you know, software that you are using. You can use free programs, for example, just write, you know, uh, program, uh, like a grammar checking. You have like programs, you might pay for it sometimes to check your grammar, or maybe go to the writing center to check it, or give it to someone who's in linguistics or art, at least to check like, you know, uh, like major spellings or grammatical mistakes. So that is what writing a literature review. So we are done. We have almost like 15 minutes. If you have any questions, any concerns, any ideas related to the literature review, especially for early childhood education. Any questions, any concerns? Okay. So I can tell you about for example, what is going on with um, the students, especially in the universities when they write their literature review. Some of the students, the mistake they do, they just, okay, they have the topic, but they don't know details about the topic. For example, when you try to search about the topic, you should write the details. For example, what will be the context? They want to do this research related, for example, to the UAE or maybe the US. Because, you know, when you start your literature, you have to be focused on your literature review. You can write information about other countries, but then your focus should be related to the UAE. But, for example, if your, if your, like, you know, literature review is just you write, let's say, five pages, for example. So you have to be specific. You, you don't have to go to other, you know, countries. Yes, as Siham mentioned. When you write your literature review, think about, okay, what the type of literature review you want to do? You want just to do a review, you go to the previous literature, or do you want to compare and contrast about an idea? So you have to think about it from the start. It will be easier for you to, you know, when you do the planning, it will be easier for you to finish your literature review. Citation is very important. Always you have to, if you paraphrase even, or you take same sentences, because, for example, it is less than 14 words, you can write at the quotation mark, which is exactly the same as from the article. If you add more, you know, the way how you format it is different. So you have to go to Google and check how you cite ABA style. Because, you know, the issue of plagiarism is very critical. You are not allowed to do that. Especially, for example, here in the UAE University, you know, when you submit your work in a blackboard, you know, as teachers, what we do, and faculty members, we add safe as sign. That's mean. They can check whatever words you are using or 
plagiarize from other resources and it was it would be like highlighted and give us the percentage so even if the teacher or faculty allow you to see the report you can see it so usually when with those cases you know usually we use the uh, the safe assign and the other programs to help us as researchers to go and re-paraphrase, for example, or rewrite, or to make sure we write the citation accurately. So it's good, but it's, you have to do it before submitting the final edition of your literature review. And also, for example, let's say you are submitting your literature review for your master degree, for example, or you are doing your PhD. It will be different. The format is different than, you know, if you are writing an article. Because, you know, the article usually is shorter, let's say 10 pages to 20 pages. So part of it, the literature review, so it will be less. So let's say you are writing your master degree paper or PhD, and then your master paper or PhD paper, that one, you will turn it to a, an article. So from that one, you will make lots of summary and paraphrasing because you know you are limiting the words. You have limited words to write. How you format your paper, you organize it, think about it. Okay, maybe you can start, you know, open award documents, okay? Write the title. Write, for example, introduction, conclusion, and then you have the body. Think about, okay, your topic. Do you want to have subheadings? Do you want to have, like, you know, compare and contrast? Advantages and disadvantages? Do you want, like, you know, chronological, like, through the history from this year to this year, that what happened from this year to this year, what happens? Okay. And please, when you do writing the literature review, don't overload yourself. So... I know you might read lots of articles, but you don't need all this information. Just cite and take the information that is suitable and important for your study. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, as, uh, you know, researchers, you resist, you know, the temptation of, you know, having all that information. Because you will say, oh, I read this article and this article and this article. I, I want to add all of them in my paper. No, don't add all of them. Choose and select what's related and relevant to your topic. You know, it is important. Also, you know, um, when you organize your paper, try to organize your paragraphs. Make sure your ideas flows smoothly. So let's say you are writing about the topic, as I mentioned, about the virtual learning in the UAE, or maybe the issue of absent students in cages. So you might start with the context, the background of the UAE about the school system. We have, let's say, charter school, we have private school, we have government school, okay, Emirati school, and then you start. Maybe you mentioned, for example, some ideas related like, you know, uh, during Ramadan, for example, some students will have more absentees, you know, because, you know, in that period, okay, they are, you know, staying awake at night. So those kind of issues you, you might mention. Because, for example, let's say, if you are a foreigner from another country and you might doesn't know about what is Ramadan and what is going on. So, you know, you might even analyze the ideas based on, on that. Let's say the researcher, he's a foreigner, he doesn't know about Ramadan. So when he writes, you know, the reason why the students, maybe he will say they are lazy, they don't want to attend classes or whatever. But the issue is not. There is another issue related to our religious, related to maybe, you know, what is going on in that period. 
of Ramadan. Let's say the students were absent and the rate of absence is high after you know our celebration, Al Eid, for example. So if you are not from our culture, you might you know make you know or analyze it in different ways. So that's always, even if you are writing about another culture, it's important to have someone from that culture. And for example, you can see here, even in, in, in the university, for example, if a foreigner writing about a topic related to our culture and related to the language, for example, the Arabic language, usually they add, you know, copy I, someone to collaborate with them to assist them through the process of reading and understanding and collecting data. For example, if you are, you know, reading about interview and it was written in Arabic and then translated to English, you know, if someone mistranslate all these ideas because of the language, is an issue. So it's always important to have someone from that background if it is culturally or from language part or whatever. So another example, let's say some, sometimes we have, you know, issue of like, you know, if we have some foreigners coming from other uh, countries and they are now like, you know, working in academia or faculty members, we might say, okay, that teacher, for example, he was working in, let's say, McDonald's or, you know, other places. So how now he is like, you know, a, a teacher or a faculty member. But when we think about it, if we go to their culture and ask them, we'll find out that, you know, most of them were working in those as freelancers and part time because, you know, they have to, you know, um, make budget for their study. So it is part of their culture. But here maybe in our country, it's a different story if we have the same issue. Okay? So it's important to understand all these kind of, you know, issues related to the literature review. And always think about your literature review as your own story. What story are you giving? What kind of argument are you giving? But at the same time, you have to be fair with that one. Because you don't want to, you know, like, you know, overload your literature review with a topic against to another idea because you are from that part of the country or the region. And you are against maybe the other part, maybe, especially if there's like, you know, you know, political issues, religious issues, cultural issues, linguistic issues, okay? You have to be in between, especially as researchers. And also, if there is like, you know, conflict of interest, so that means avoid writing about that issue from the start. If you feel like, you know, your beliefs and your interest will come in into your literature review. And thank you students for attending the workshop. And thank you, Sister Amina, for organizing this amazing uh, literature. Thank you. Welcome. شكرا دكتور الرادة
العفو اخت امينه وانتظر من الريكورد التسجيل شكرا نعم